Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the case may be where you are. My name is Sam Ogden, and I am a contributing writer for the wildly popular skeptical blog called Skeptic, which of course you can find on the dub dub dubs at skeptic.org. As you can see, today they've pulled me away from my computer keyboard, put some pants on me, and set me in front of this camera for a conversation with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Dr. Tyson is an astrophysicist. He's the director of the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History in Manhattan. He's the author of several best-selling books on astrophysics and astronomy. And he's the excellent host of NOVA's Science Now program. Oh, and he's also a really nice guy. Dr. Tyson. Welcome to Houston. How you been living? Uh, happy to be in Houston. I put on my, uh, can I leave my hat on for the interview? For you my may Houston leave it hat? on. You may leave it on. All right. In All fact, right. I have a story about that hat, if we can just start. About my that. hat? You have yes. a story about my hat? We, uh, I was attending one of James Randi's amazing meetings in Las Vegas, and I think this was two or three years ago. Okay. But you were the keynote speaker there. That's the only one I've ever been to. Because I'm, I'm, while I'm a big supporter and fan of the skeptics movement, that's not part of my public profile. I usually right. just try to get people thinking straight in the first place. Right. Well, <laughs> then, then I hand them all off to you guys. <laughs> well, you were there and you did a great job that well, year. Thank but you. The, the story I wanted to tell was the, uh, the conference has not even kicked off yet. We all gather uh, for the reception upstairs in one of the reception areas and we're having drinks and we're talking and we're getting comfortable with, our, with each other. And you walk in and you've got uh, camouflage cargo pants on, sneakers and that hat. <laughs> Camouflage cargo pants, sneakers, and that hat. And you looked good. You, pull, you pulled it off. You pulled it off. Is now, that one of those things that, well, that looks good on you, but no one else would dare it? I'm that? telling you, if I put on cargo, uh, camouflage cargo pants, sneakers, and a black fedora, people would be giving me their spare change on the street corner. You made it look good. I want to commit you to some institution, I guess. Well, thank you. I was just, it's what I, I thank you. I guess that uh, you. when you're, when you're the, the sexiest astrophysicist alive, you can pull that sort of off. That was them. eight years ago, so that, not lately. <laughs> lately. Anyway, welcome to Houston. You are in town for the Up Experience Conference, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is, from what I gather, is a, 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 a one-day conference with multiple just brilliant speakers, and they're going to cram them all into one day, so the people that are attending this thing, their heads are going to explode with so much good information well, at the end of the day. Part of the cramming of it is that we only get 20 minutes to speak. So you're going to be cramming a lot into your So speech. I said, they came to me and said, we need you to bring the universe into 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I, what. Yeah, it'll be head exploding. If, that's, <laughs> if, you don't have, if you don't have an occasion to digest it and absorb it in the rest of your body, it's still stuck in your head for the entire 20 minutes. So I'm not responsible. For all for, the heads that explode. For, for what might happen. <laughs> well, so how has the universe, universe been? What's been going on with it? The universe is good. The universe is good. I'm good. That's you know? Fine. 14 billion years of, of uh, cosmic evolution, all these amazing things happening. What have you fact, done for me lately? <laughs> it's not only good, it's good. It's good. It's good. good. There's some asteroids might be headed our way, but a uh, recent one, Apophis, uh, earlier probabilities gave it at one in about 45,000 that it might have hit us. And now that's been revised to one in several million. So that's a good sign. Uh, yeah. So now we can study it just as a curiosity rather than something to run to the hills <laughs> to yeah. avoid. That's, that's good. We don't yeah, that's asteroid to Apophis. If you hadn't heard of it, it's the size of the Rose Bowl, basically. And in April, in the year 2029, April 13th, which, by the way, is a Friday. Is a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> that is going to have a close approach to Earth, and it'll dip below our orbiting communication satellites. It'll be the closest, biggest thing we've ever observed to Earth. And typically when we have close approaches, they're uh, you know, twice the moon distance or sometimes even half the moon distance. This one is within our satellites, and so we're going to be looking pretty closely at this one. It was never going to hit on that pass. It was the seven years later. That was the big uncertainty, depending on Earth's gravity as it tugged on it in that close approach, we didn't know whether Earth's gravity would be just right, or of course, just wrong, <laughs> to, to bring it seven years later and actually have it hit us. So uh, right now, it looks like we will, it'll, Earth is safe for another well, that's good. Why, another why does years. the universe want to kill us? What did we ever do to it? I know. Well, no, it's not, here's the problem. It's not the lament that the universe 
all of a sudden wants to kill us. The universe has always wanted to kill us. <laughs> it's the delusion that somehow we are safe beings on this haven that people call Earth, or this Earth that people call haven. Um, Earth has wanted to kill us from the beginning. You just take a look. Uh, in fact, we live in very small regions of the total available surface area of the Earth because, of course, most of Earth's surface is water. Most of that water would freeze you to death in a matter of minutes. Um, tops, 20 minutes, you're dead, you're frozen. All right? For most of the sort of the water, uh, the polar waters, and if you're not in the polar waters, you're someplace else where a shark would find you quite tasty. And if you don't land in the ocean, you're in some forest or jungle somewhere. So we gather ourselves into places and build walls and protections and, and wear clothes so that we narrow the exposure of our body to the elements. And then we say Earth is a beautiful place to live. Well, we're good at finding those safe zones. Right? Safe zones. Now, of course, I'd rather live on Earth than any other planet, but we need to still be honest about ways the Earth can kill us. Tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, lightning strikes, um, volcanoes, um, earthquakes. Did I say earthquakes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just add them all up, and the ways people die are immense. And it's not just us. Look at the fossil record. 95 plus percent of all species that ever lived are now extinct. And they're extinct for natural forces that, in almost all cases, some are extinct because we made them extinct, but we're sort of Johnny come lately here. The history of the Earth shows that it's actually quite hostile to the survival of a species. Yeah, well, I, I kid the universe a lot. Uh, for, for trying to kill us. But it, it's actually one of my favorite all-encompassing natural constructs. You know, so. Yeah, I have to agree. You know, if you know how to dodge the bullets, it's, you can have a good time. Well, yeah. you know.